What's up? This is Out of Pocket. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Josiah Johnson. I'm Zach Schwartz. And we got a legend with us. My, my man, Bones. How you doing, my G? I'm here, man. I feel good. I feel blessed to be a part of the uh, podcast. Yo, Bones, so we got to interview you before the draft, our esteemed colleague, Sebastian Green, and you had some really high, lofty expectations for yourself. I'm saying this now. I'm going to go off in summer league, and I'm going to go off in the league. It's, it's, it's smoke for everybody. I don't hold nothing. I don't hold nothing. Let's back go, baby. Guys. Let's go. <laughs> what does it mean to you to make an all NBA rookie team this year? Um, it feel good because uh, coming in, you know, uh, first of all, I got drafted at the 26 pick. So, you know, coming in, you know, I always never wanted myself to, you know, have things handed to me. That never been me my whole life. So coming in, I always wanted to, you know, show them that I'm here to stay and I'm here to, you know, mark my, uh, make my mark and, uh, you know, show my, my work ethic. And then, you know, from the start of the summer, you know, when it was a uh, summer league and then it went to training camp, I was, you know, letting people know on my team that I'm here and, you know, you're going to have to show me that I, that I don't belong here. So, and I showed them that I belong here from training camp all the way up to the season. And in the beginning, you know, coach went with his decision, and uh, I wasn't playing at first. But you know, that type of stuff don't make me mad. It just made me go harder. And uh, I kept showing coach that I'm ready. And um, you know, he threw me in there uh, against the Cavs. I got in. You know, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was a plus minus. Uh, I had a, a good plus, you know, in the plus minus category. So you know, I just kept, you know, going and going and going. And then uh, originally, coach you know, he started trusting in me, and I just started taking off. So you know, this season, you know, to make uh. Uh, rookie all second team has is, 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 is been amazing for me uh, because I did everything that I said I was going to do from the beginning of the season before I, uh, before I got drafted when I was going through the draft work I was you know I said what I was going to do and I did everything I said I was going to do yeah you stood on those words do you have any goals or predictions for this year um yeah but I like to keep my goals to myself you know like I don't really like talk to them too much talk about it too much for until sure. they get you know closer to the season I was hoping we'd get like a, I'm going to be first team all NBA. We could have that clip ready and then bring you back the next time, you know, but <laughs> yeah, we need so I, I get it. I respect that. Keep those. You yeah, said, obviously in the interview, you don't duck any smoke with anyone. I wanted to know, is there a guy or a matchup you had circled going into the year where you were like, I- I'm, I'm going, that's, I, I want to go after him. Uh, honestly, no, not really. Uh, I-, I had everybody circled. Like it was like, no, just one person. I want to smoke with every single body. Like it, I wanted the people to know who Bones is, and, and and even though I'm, you know, I got a slim frame, you not ready to just run over me and show me that I don't belong here. I wanted to show people that I belong here and make my mark. And I feel like I did a great job with that. You know, from the every single team that came up to me after the game, they just tell me that you know you're gonna be a superstar in this league, et cetera, et cetera, and that type of stuff. You know, it it it, it means a lot to me because you know, of the amount of work that I put in. And, you know, sometimes you just, you know, just to hear that from the greats like Carmelo, Anthony Davis, you know, Russell Wellsbrook, you know, the, the guys who's going to be first, uh, you know, ballot uh, Hall of Fame players. That means a lot to me, honestly. Like Chris Paul, Steph Curry, all them guys, it, it really means a lot to me because I put in so much work, you know, and I just want, you know, the world to know my name and, and, and let them know that I'm going to be a superstar in this league. You obviously going into the league knew there were guys that were going to talk shit to you. Was there anyone that, like, surprised you that was a shit talker and you kind of were like – He's talking a lot of shit. Like um, I didn't expect that. I ain't gonna. I, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, who was it? Um, I think it was Clay Thompson. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, there was one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really didn't think Clay Thompson talked a lot of gas. Uh, yeah, when I see right. him play against it in, in person, I'm like, whoa, Clay Thompson talked trash. And he's yeah. a killer, you know, but I didn't, I never seen him talk trash before. But just to see him talk, I'm like, oh, say, he talked trash. Right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And, and, so, what was he so, saying? Some, some guys, you know, he, uh, it's just a lot of like, you know, basketball talk, like, um, For sure. you know, like he can't wait to, you know, he get out there to, you know, kill us and stuff like that. And, yeah. uh, he yeah. hit a jump shot and start talking cash, you know, but that's, that's basketball, you know, I love right. that. Yeah, 100%. Right. Right. I, I, I didn't expect that from Clay because I never like watching it from before I got in the league. I never see him talk trash. He just bomb on people, bomb, bomb, bombs. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just never seen him. You know, talk trash. It was just always a silent assassin from him yeah. just hitting a lot of shots, and, and nobody can guard you know him while he's making shots. So that's that's really what I I seen. I never seen him talk trash though. Now that you say it, I could totally see him being the guy that's like kind of with his mouth shut, like oh god, you like you, yeah. you, don't, you on the <laughs> camera, you're not seeing it, but you're hearing it right next to him on the court. You know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it yeah. was kind of, like, shocking and mind-blowing to me that I see him just talking so much gas. Bro was <laughs> cashing out, though. So I'm like, man, he got the right to, you know? Yeah, 100%. Hey, 
Hey, Bones, just want to know, so, you know, got got a chance to play a full NBA season. Who was the toughest matchup that you faced? Who was the guy that you went out there and maybe weren't expecting, but went out there and was like, yo, this dude is really about that life? Um, I would say uh, Gary Payton and Davion Mitchell, they got good defense. Uh, mm-hmm. They real good on their feet, um, their quickness and their lateral quickness. And the way they read, you know, the, the ball and, and just always being in the right spot. Like, I give a lot of credit to them. You know, going against them was, was fun for me, you know, uh, like the third time I think I went against Davion, uh, he like made me roll my ankle, but like he he like get up under you where you know you you your steps sometimes just a little off, you know. But yeah. he he got good uh good feet and uh, also Gary Payton in the playoffs, you know, our my first game playing against them like he always like getting over my screens and you know just just always you know just there and uh like the third game the fourth game you know I had got at him though so it was a <laughs> it was good you know. <laughs> yes, sir. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I had got at him, but um, you know, and then at halftime that game four, I think he came to me like, "Bones, you lucky I'm not out there." Nah, nah. I'm like, "You're not out there because I'm getting at you." And go <laughs> set you in. Damn, that's why you're not out there. Because <laughs> you can't who, guard me. That's just going on. Who was the player you was like, bro? You really shouldn't be on the same court with me, dog. Like this ain't even fair. G. <laughs> who got in front of you was like, "You yeah. fooled my G. You fooled out here." Let's somebody time. get him. I somebody ain't get lie, him. Though, I, I, I ain't, I'm not going to lie, it's been a lot of them this year. Like, it's been, like, a whole lot of them. It's been – I'm hearing conversations on the court where uh, two players, like, um, no, I got it, no, I got it, no, I got it. Just fighting over who guarded me. And then they, like, he going to have to kill me, da, da, da. It's just – I, I, I just sensed a lot of scary scary moments in a lot of people this year. <laughs> like, certain, certain people are scared, you know, check me, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just like, man, one of y'all guard me before I, before I bomb this thing from deep. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> nah, seriously, you know, but, but nah, it's been a whole lot of people who, you know, I, I feel like it's not like they shouldn't, you know, belong out there. But, you know, everybody, you know, try to make that mark in the league, et cetera, et cetera. So I ain't going to throw them on nobody. But as far as me, like, I feel like nobody can check me. And when somebody step in front of me, you know, I look at them as fool. Yeah. Ain't no holding every, back on nobody. Everybody fool. Yeah, everybody. I ain't holding back on nobody. So you on the team, you know, two-time MVP, Nikola Jokic. You know, you see him every day in practice. Um, yeah. Give us some insight on the type of person he is on the court and off the court. So first, like off the court, you know, um, he's a guy who's, you know, he, he won't he won't speak a lot. But when he speaks, you listen. And yeah. it's like it's a powerful speak, you know, because it's coming from him. And we know that, you know, he's an MVP. And at the same time, you know, he's well respected as well. But he's not just coming off and being so like arrogant and, and, and trying to, you know, uh, like cuss you out. He's trying to teach you, and he, and when he's saying it, you like, damn, like you is right. He's always a step, like step ahead. He's a, a genuine dude. He all he cares about winning. Like you know, if you talk to him about accolades, like he's not gonna want to talk to you about it. Like he's just gonna want to talk to you about how can the Nuggets organization get better. How can we, you know, compete for a championship and win a championship. That's all he cares about. And when I'm talking to him, you know, at the beginning of the season when I wasn't playing, he was telling me like, you know, bones like. You know, I know you're not playing, you know, when you're supposed to be playing, but, you know, just stay humble and, and stay ready, and, you know, your time is going to come. And that, that hearing that from him at an early age and him saying that to a rookie, you know, it meant a lot to me because he, you know, he don't have to say that type of stuff to me, you know, mm-hmm. as, as me coming in. You know, I have to work for everything that, you know, I want. And he's just telling me stay level-headed and keep God first and always, you know, be ready for the moment and, and be ready when, you, when your number called because that's what he did, you know, uh, back when um I think about six years ago. A guy was in front of him and he got hurt and Yoke had to step up and when Yoke took uh stepped up he just took over mm-hmm. and they had made Yoke the primary center up for the team so that's what he was trying to tell me when we was walking in the hallway to our cars leaving for practice and that that's the type of guy that he is off the court he just always want to look out for you and you know be there for you and the type of guy he is on the court is is just straight business the dude is like unguardable unstoppable mm-hmm. he reads the play before you even see it you know if he catching the ball and it's, it's coming off a pocket pass, and he already expecting the guy to step up. And he's already looking at the guy that's in the dunker. He's tip passing to him. If he read that sec, that guy that's that's in the weak side corner, and he's you know he fills into the dunker spot, he's kicking into the corner, and that's a bang. Like he just sees it so like fast. It's it's not like a, a second step late late. It's just always like a step you know faster. And the guy's like he incredible, and his his touch is the best touch that I ever seen in my life. You're saying that he will he knows the next move he's making before he even receives the ball in a pocket pass? Yes. I, That's it's a crazy. clip where I, I think it was a clip where I, it might have been the Spurs, but I'm not sure. But 
he received a, a, a lofting pass over top of the head, you no know, rolling. Mm-hmm. He didn't even look at the guy in the dunker. He just tipped the ball to him, to AG. He just tipped it to him, and AG got the dunk. And we like, yo, bro, like, like, come on, bro. It's no way, bro. He wasn't even looking at. He already expected the guy to step up on yo. He just watch. I think he watches so much film, but mm-hmm. he doesn't watch the film in the locker room. I, I think he's doing it, you know, on on his own time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's just seeing how they just playing him, you know. And, Cause I watch film in the locker room and on my own. I think he's just going home and watching film, and he's just seeing everything and and it's making him, you know, read everything a step, you know, faster. Jokic seems like a very laid back guy. He obviously got his MVP award from the farm. Do you have any kind of good Jokic story about maybe the first time you met him or behind the scenes thing? You obviously shared the story about him helping yeah. you when you were, you know, first getting your minutes adjusted and stuff like that. Was there any behind the scenes thing with Jokic that's like your that stands out? Um, yeah, I would say uh first when we when we had we we did training before the season and I had it we was training at Red Rocks and so I'm I I'm, I'm driving there and they already there. So with the work I was at nine o'clock. I left at eight o'clock from my house to get there to Ray Rocks at by nine. So I'm driving and I get there about like eight forty or eight forty five. So the place is so big I can't figure out where it's at. I can't find it. So I get there at like eight fifty eight, I think. So I pulled up. So he like <laughs> he like, brother, don't be late no more. Make this your last time being late. I'm like, hey, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like you didn't navigate or help me get here. Yo, like, this is my first time here, bro. Like, you didn't help me get here. I don't know where I'm at. So he, he like, no, make this your last time being late. This is gonna be your last time being late. So I'm like, ah, right, yo, that's my fault, man. But like, th- can you at least try to like navigate and help me? You know, but that's just the type of guy he is. He held everybody accountable. He held himself accountable as well. And then you know, just from one of the amazing moments, you know. Uh, I think it was the Sixers game. You know, he was just hugging me so hard that game. And, uh, you know, just, you know, uh, you know, like, what's the word? Like, um, you know, basically saying, like, I did a real good job that game, you know. Yeah, and yeah. then the Indiana Pacers, you know, after the game against the Pacers, you know, I had stepped up big time for the team and uh, uh, carried the, helped carry the, the win as well. And, you know, he just kept, you know, saying, like, Bones, you did a, like a hell of a job, great job. And then, you know, he gave me so much props in his interview – you know, and that, that doesn't happen from a star that much, you know, superstar that much going, going into an interview and giving a rookie props. So that, yeah. that meant a lot to me. And because uh, it just showed that my work is, you know, paying off, you know, uh, from the season that I was just, you know, working my tail off. And just to get props from a guy who's a two time MVP means a lot to me because, like I said, I just work my tail off. So when you, when you look at that squad, who's the guy on the Nuggets that you got the opportunity to play with that that just has you know crazy work ethic? You talk about about Yoke being able to to watch film at the crib and come back, but is there anybody else on this team that you just were surprised and amazed, and maybe even inspired by just the amount of work that they put in? Um, yeah, a guy who doesn't play. His name is Marcus Howard. Uh, his work ethic is through the you know through the roof. Um, dude doesn't play, but you know his his work I, that, that's some a work ethic that you know I always you know. Uh, look at like, dang, he worked out, you know, almost as hard as me because I'm in there, you know, at nighttime, even though we got a long NBA season, I'm in there every night grinding and getting it in. But him, uh, uh, I think Yoke, he, he he works out hard. You know, I think he does it a lot where um, a lot of guys is not, you know, in the gym or aware or around. But um, Yoke, uh, a lot of guys on the team work out a lot, but I just don't, I just don't catch them a lot. But, uh, hmm. you know, I speak for myself. I'm in there, you know, every night during the season, you know, getting yeah. it in. So that's just to speak for myself, for sure. Your first official NBA game was against the Suns. I know you didn't get the burn you wanted, but how was that experience? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, you know, the atmosphere, the, you know, the energy, the the level of talent that was on the floor. It was, it was like, it was really eating up my soul because I really wanted to be out there. And yeah. I'm like, coach man like just you know just trusting me and me and coach had a meeting before the night and because I was in the second unit and then the game the set the next day you know uh like I didn't play at all and I usually go in with the second unit from training camp so I'm like well I'm not playing so but you know I kept that to myself and I'm just like man like I, I really wanted to be out there but you know I'm the type of kid like when it's not my turn I always support and you know I always you know like cheer on my teammates. I'm not the type of guy who's going to sit there and like, why wow, it's not me? Why well, I'm not out there? Da da. You know, I'm not that type of kid. I'm that type of kid who's just going, you know, support my teammates. And and if they out there, you know, I'm going to make sure that I give them all my energy. As you know, because I would want them to give them their all their energy when I'm out there performing and playing. So you know, as the time went on, as the season went on, 
you know, I started to see that from my teammates and, you know, they was there for me every moment of the other of way, you know, for the season. Yeah. So it, it's been a blessing for me just to overcome, you know, not playing until playing. So, Moses, I got to talk to you about a sad moment for, from my experience this year. I'm a big time LeBron fan, Lakers fan. Uh, Lakers came into Denver. You gave LeBron and that crew 27 and 10. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> Six threes. Sheesh. What's, what's going through your head as you just completely just demoralizing the Lakers? And did LeBron give you any love during that game at all? Man, I ain't going to lie. Like, I really was on some, like, y'all going to know my name after this game. And I'm going to make my mark and let y'all know that you're stars in this building. And I'm one of them. That's what, that was my whole demeanor. Yes, like, it was no, like, no it. backing Love down. It. Like, I knew, like, coach was going to call my number early. I went in at, like, six minutes, and I ain't, I ain't, I ain't hit no breaks that game. It was all go. Like, I, I wanted to, I wanted to <laughs> let them know that I'm here. Like, I ain't hit no breaks. Like, and I, I had got a lot of, you know, homage that game. A lot of the, the guys paid me love, showed me love. But, you know, LeBron, the type of guy, like, I think if he loses badly, he's not going to, you know, go up to a guy and give him, you know, props. I yeah. think. Understand uh, so. so I think he, I think he just, you know, he he just walks off the court and just leaves, <laughs> just from a disappointment standpoint. But LeBron means it. well though. Like he he give a lot of guys props and stuff like that, especially you know guys who you know show him love. And I think I think he he does a great job of showing guys love. But I think though, like after a guy you know performs like that, you know, as you being a great. So you gotta show. You gotta stay out there and show some love. You got to mm-hmm. like that's that's your role. That's 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 you're a superstar. You're, you're in the conversation is one of the greatest you know to ever play basketball. So I feel though sometimes you should you you can stay out there and show some love. You know and yeah. and, and show some because a lot of people do that to you. So and after you perform and the other team loses, you know guys go up to you and you know et cetera et cetera. You know sometimes it, it can be vice versa. But you know I got a lot of love for LeBron. You know after the game in L. A. You know, we had beat them. You know, I had one up to him. He like young killer, et cetera, et cetera. So he showed me some love after that. Okay. But you know, a, a, a great dude though, LeBron, great dude though for sure. I was gonna say that's probably the best compliment he could show you is just literally walking off the court in yeah. frustration. Like, goddamn, yeah. we just <laughs> bone just busted our yeah, teeth. Nah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm out. Like, I ain't got nothing to say to this man. I can't even look this yeah. man in the eye. Yeah. He just did that to me. <laughs> no, we cold. Nah, I ain't gotta say it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He definitely, he may not have said anything, but you went on the list, like the GM LeBron now knows exactly (laughs) who you are. You went on a list for sure. I I do want to ask you though, in that rookie year, as you're traveling around, you're getting to play in these arenas that I imagine you, you know, grew up watching on TV, playing, you know, in 2K. Was, is Staples the one that you're like, shit, this is awesome. What what was the one that you had most circled? Like, I want to go off. Was it the garden? What, what was it for you? I didn't, so I didn't get a chance to play in a garden or in okay. the, um, the Nets Arena because I was injured. But um, the Lakers, for sure, man. The, yeah. It just feels like a movie in there. Like it, yeah. it feels almost <laughs> fake in Staples Center. It feels fake. Like it, it, it does not feel real. Like that, yeah. it doesn't feel like basketball should be taking place in that uh, arena. So yeah. that game. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks game. That was that. That was a game that I circled too. Like, cause right I had my pre-draft uh, workouts up there, and I had Ooh. my pre-draft training. I mean, up there, so I really like you know wanted to come back and you know play well and, and showed up people that you know when when they was down there watching me work out, like showed them that dang, like I'm really in the lead. That this can be them in their shoes. So you know, I Hold always live by the hashtag could be you. You know, and that's just something that I live by because I always want to show you know the next person. You know that this could be you. You know, coming from where I came from, you know, you don't you don't have to. You know, take it's going to be setbacks in your life, but you always push forward and push through whatever you go through. So we heard you got bars. We heard you be in the studio a little bit, dropping some heat. I want to ask you, yeah. in your opinion, who is the best hooper slash rapper of all time? Me, no okay. question. <laughs> like, ain't even like no question. No, I so, I, I think I'm the best. Like. I, I would say Dame is the the most lyr- the best lyrical, but I got the best vibe and the best music in the league, like hands down. Like it ain't even like no question. And what do you got to say to the Miles Bridges contingent out there that thinks that he the, he's got the most bars in the game right now? Nah, I mean he probably go toe to toe with. Um, I don't even think he go toe to toe with Dame. Honestly, Dame well, got really Miles bars. Got for to say, I'm sorry. Wow. My, my, Miles Miles, is fire. Miles got bars for sure. Miles my guy. Miles hard, but like yeah. I just think like Dame got more lyrical like bars where it's like people feel that you know mm-hmm. i think me and miles got more vibe music you know mm-hmm. like yeah. we make mm-hmm. more vibe and like head sure. boppers like dame got more relaxing and just chill like drink your wine type music you know just <laughs> yeah, listen to yeah. him <laughs> me okay. and miles got like real head bopper music but i okay. think yeah. as far as for me 
I think I got the best, like, I got the best, mu- like, making music part where you feel that in your soul. You know, like, I got good, hue, like, hood, soul music. Like, you're going to feel that music. I think okay. that's for me, honestly. A lot of people run from smoke. You run towards it. Yeah. Where did this come from, G? Where did that energy come from? It came from me, you know, just growing up in a tough environment. And you had to have that energy and had to have that, you know, that non-scared, like, being, like, you can't be scared in the hood. You got to, like, because if you're scared in the hood, they're going to run right over you. And there's no, mm-hmm. you know, backing mm-hmm. down, no, because you're playing against all older people. They don't care if you're younger. If you're trying to step on this court, you got to show them that you belong. And if you don't show them that you don't belong, if you don't show them that you belong, you won't play again. So right, me, right. like, as a younger kid, like, I, I always, like, you know, when I stepped on the court, they was like, nah, this young and nice. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I always, like, wanted to step on the court and show them that I'm here to stay and I'm here to belong. Because if you don't, if you don't perform well, that next time they had them run, they're not going to pick you up. They're like, man, mm-hmm. trash, you know. So that ain't, that's something that I always stuck with me. And, you know, I always wanted to, you know, show them my heart. And they like, man, this kid got heart. Like, and I was so small and, like, any, even skinnier than I am right now. Like, man, this kid, like, a real scrawny kid. When he stepped on the court, he got some heart. And he hit, like, I'm bombing threes. Like, I'm hitting with the, you know, the crossovers, you know, just my <laughs> flashing this game. And they was feeling that. So I'm like, yeah, that, and th- that, that energy carried from, you know, my, my younger uh, days to like all the way up to now, I just never changed. I, I never been scared of the moment ever. Um, all right, last thing we want to ask you. Obviously, the NBA Finals are here. I want to know: Do you have a prediction? Who's going to win? Um, I think. Uh, I, I honestly don't know who's going to win. Honestly, I can't even okay. tell you the way this is going for you know the mm-hmm. Celtics. Yeah, it, they really have a lot of momentum, and I love the way they're playing. They're not backing down from nobody, and I really think like their length. And their, you know, ability to switch one to five will, you know, uh, like really hurt, you know, the Warriors and and, a, and, a, and some changes. Because I think they are, like, the Warriors are, are have a hard time adjusting to that. It's sort of to how the Memphis, you know, uh, played against them. More, like, real physical. Like, but but Celtics is much more bigger. Like, the Memphis, you know, guarded them well, but the Celtics is really more bigger. Like, everybody's, like, hmm. six, five and up. It's, there's no little guys on our team. And they even off the bench, the guys are big and, and can switch one through five. So I think that their defense will have a hard time uh, a hard time for the Warriors. And also, they they can match, like, scoring. They match scoring with them well. Like, I think if yeah. the Miami Heat would have won against the Warriors, they wouldn't have, the Warriors would have outscored them every game because Jimmy yeah. Butler ain't going to have 40-something every game. Yeah. You know, but the Celtics got a lot of scoring on our team. So it's kind of, you know, hard for the Warriors just to outscore them. And plus, on top of that, the Celtics defense. So – I'm kind of leaning towards the Celtics a little bit. Okay. But you never know what the words, man. They, they've been here for, for a minute, man. He, so you can't go against them, honestly. All right, Bones. Appreciate having you. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Josiah Johnson. I'm Zach Schwartz. Y'all be cool. Peace. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Buckets. Did you enjoy that video? Well, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to the channel. Check out some of the other videos we have. They're all fantastic. Also, like the video and make sure to comment on it. Anything you want to tell any of us.